Okay, so again, my name is Philip Martin. Um, I am the co-owner of Philip Martin Gallery in Los Angeles with my partner, Portia Hine. I am very happy to work with uh, the Brathwaite family and very happy to talk today with Kwame Samori Brathwaite, who is the director of the Brathwaite Archive and the son of renowned photographer Kwame Brathwaite. Um, how are you doing today, Kwame? I'm fantastic. Good to talk to you, Philip. Thanks yeah. For, uh, taking the time. Good. So we have a lot of different things to talk about today. I mean, we are launching a new group of newly released images, many of which have never been seen, um, focusing on a range of themes. Do you want to talk to us a little bit about the show, which is entitled My Village, New York? Yeah. Um, thanks again. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Uh, it's really amazing to be able to go through this work uh, that my father's producing. Um, and, you know, we're still focused on somewhat early in his career, mm -hmm. uh, like late 60s, 70s. And my village was a kind of, um, you know, adopting from the African proverb, takes a village to raise a child. And I think, you know, what was really, uh, really what's kind of got this whole thing going was seeing some of these images of my sister um, yeah. who's on screen now and Dola mm -hmm. um, rocking her trees uh, hairdo <laughs> yeah. uh, you know from a, from photo shoots that my father would do with her and he, he did a lot especially with my sister uh, uh -huh. when she was younger and here she's about I think five or six um, and you know it's in front of this really amazing mural and I and when we saw the image Robin and I um, we were going through the image of Robin's my wife, obviously, who works with me in the archive. Um, we were just like, this is really beautiful, but it, it also kind of changes the perspective a bit because mostly we've been focused on my father and his, um, you know, his presentation of mostly adults and, and you know, adult life. And mm -hmm. I think this definitely jumps into a different aspect of his photography and something I touched upon in you know, the recent article I wrote for Nat Geo, but just as, you know, his perspective, the child's gaze, you know, how they're observing and watching us, but also, um, you know, the perspective that they have on the world and how we influence that, but also his care in, in photographing them and capturing their humanity as a father, you know, now as a father yeah. doing his work. And so I think it changes how his, he uses his lens same care but i think the perspective is a little bit different yeah so we're going to look at a number of images here today and i think that one of the things that has always struck me about your father's work is the, the feeling that we know from feminism of course of the personal is political and your father has always done an amazing job and an amazing ability has an amazing ability to show that we look at members of our society and images as images. Um, we also look at them as people and the ability to participate in representation, to represent yourself, to of course create beautiful images in which you love yourself for who you are, which is a central message of Black is Beautiful. But, but to know that we're really looking at people is, an, is a continual theme in your father's work. And I think it's really interesting that in this image here, which maybe we spend just a little bit more time of, here he is 10 years later from sort of some of the amazing events that occur in the early 60s with the Grand Assa models and the success of the Naturally Show, which is so mobbed that it becomes this huge event, the starting of AJAZ, the starting <clears throat> of a lot of things. It's interesting. So it's, it sounds like you're saying that if he did a lot of work with Indola, you know, that that it, his own life also became a kind of diary or or he found feeling there, which makes me wonder, you know, if you could tell us just a little bit more about the location and 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 maybe also what it was like for you growing up, because it sounds like there were a lot of um, enriching activities. Yeah, no, I think I think, you know, with with anything, when you when you look at his work, you know, part of it and part of why we talked about my village, New York, was it was about, you know, the community, right? The mm -hmm. community in which we lived and which we worked and operated and and specifically, you know, for the most part here in Harlem, uh, you know, we were 
when by the time I was born, uh, we're on 118th Street uh, in Harlem. And, you know, this is, I don't know the exact location of this particular mural, but he obviously seeing the aesthetics of it and what it represented and the cultural kind of, like I said, the, what the neighborhood was feeling at that time, mm -hmm. um, used a lot of times these amazing backdrops to establish, you know, place, to establish political ideology and mm -hmm. to establish, you know, this sense of self. And I think, <clears throat> you know, she is, you know, the, the, the beautiful outfit she's in, uh, I'm sure was, you know, something that was created by either my mother or one of the other Grand Dassa models. And, 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 and also, you know, I think you also get to see the environment, right? So there's this beautiful mural. And then interestingly enough, and, you know, there's, there's the, the clear bottle that's, you know, just sitting there, which I think is also a part of just the habitat. Like this is, this is what was there, right? Mm -hmm. he could have removed it. He could have cropped it out. He could have done that, but I think he chose to put it in the picture to, to establish that place. Um, but, you know, for me growing up, it was a similar situation. I think uh, we referenced, it was referenced in that article in that geo where, you know, there's a picture of me reaching in his, uh, his photo bag mm -hmm. um, to grab a, a ball. And, um, he oftentimes, I think, you know, my, my sister was on an album, a couple of album covers, a single and an album cover for the Fat Back Band. And, you know, it, it was, she, she became, you know, one of the youngest Grand Dassa models. Um, right. And she was, she was part of that movement and that, in that, um, that ideology. And I think it's really, um, for me, just, it was just a striking image along with the, the other that's later on in this group of images. Um, where she's on a school field trip, right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, oftentimes parents go on school field trips with their, with their, um, with their children. But, you know, my father being the photographer that he is, took the opportunity to, to find uh, that moment. Um, and interestingly enough, again, we talk, we look at perspectives, right? Um, she's on a school field trip, he's taking her image. She's aware of it. Um, and you have her gaze and, and it was just such a striking image for us. Everyone else is kind of in their element and she's very aware of his presence mm -hmm. and observing what he's doing and, and, and observing how he interacts with the space. This is at Lincoln Center. Uh, and then they're stopping at this little, you know, this little food truck to grab some food. But I just think it was really this um, amazing for us, it was really amazing to see this thought and, and, it, and it made us think about the perspective that she had. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think I should, you know, it's funny, I, I don't, um, I should reach out to her and, and find out whether, whether or not she remembers what she was thinking in this particular photo, but um, she was very excited about the fact that we were gonna be, <clears throat> you know, sharing some of these images that had not been seen, so. Well, it's interesting, you know, what you're saying here, just to kind of reiterate it a little bit that, um, yeah, your Indola here is not an unknown person to your father, obviously, and she's right. not a figure without power in this image. Um, and I think that, again, that the reality of people and the reality of what people live through and the reality of how we go about changing our lives and what we want to do in terms of the kind of world we want to live in and where we live. And I think through the lens of children is a really um, interesting theme in the work. And I think also we have an exhibition coming up with um, Suzanne Villamuter that we're really excited to be doing that's going to articulate the Grand Assa models who you mentioned. The Grand Assa Models group, I, I'm going to say, was started in 61, perhaps a little bit earlier, but at the same time as the African Jazz Arts Society and Studios. It's an artist activist organization. And well, the it's, it's actually, 62 is actually officially when they, when they okay. start. Yeah, 62. So 62. And so the assumption, because they're the Grand Assa Models, that I think we've, we've had, you know, just to clarify things for some people, they were models in the sense that they were models for the natural look. They took on the, the notion that their very being was political and everything that they did in their dress and their hair, um, they would be looked at and, they, and they, they looked to a standard of black beauty that they wanted people to know and to see and to experience and to inform themselves about. 
And they were artist activists who made their own clothing and, and very much agents in their own right. Um, and I think this show at Suzanne's will be really exciting because it's gonna give a lot of opportunities for people to start to learn, think more about who these people are in the same way that the picture of Indola is a, is a real person. In the, pre in the very first image, we saw a mural with a number of African traditions represented. You see here the articulation of different African traditions as people in the United States are starting to learn them and, 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 and find that beauty and meaning in them. Do you want to talk just a little bit more, a bit more about what we're seeing here? Yeah, look, <clears throat> again, um, the beauty of going through this work is the ability to discover images like these. Yeah. Um, this is just the one that, you know, was kind of just breathtakingly beautiful uh, in its in its simplicity, right? Mm -hmm. you, have, you have the models here. Um, and uh, actually we have names of almost everyone. So mm -hmm. we have Deborah Clark in the first row seated, um, Diane Nolan, Regina, I, I don't know her last name, Diane O'Harris, uh, who actually became a, um, a woman who uh, went to church with us uh, mm -hmm. when I was growing up, uh, and she was a teacher at, at our church, mm -hmm. uh, Deborah Pugh, and then the woman to the far right. Um, I still have to locate her information. But, um, you know, I think this was really, it just, it just jumped out at us because, you know, we're at a time when women's rights are being stripped away. Mm -hmm. yeah. Image represents... Um, kind of a moment in time um, and a desire to do exactly the opposite of that, to give power, to be in power, to have agency, mm -hmm. autonomy of, you know, being able to wear your hair the way, you, the, way you, the way you want to, to make your own decisions. But I also think, you know, one of the things that I was really just impressed upon me was the gaze, again, their stance, their positions, um, it's not just in who they are, but what they represent. They represent us in our power. They represent us um, making decisions about ourselves, about what will we call, who we, he, how we will address the world that we live in, how to be active and change the narrative around things mm -hmm. and, to, and to empower us to be better and, and to stand for something greater. So I think this in particular, um, it's it's a it's a really grounding image that really sets the tone for you know the, his work thematically with you know black is beautiful and 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 the the, the whole approach. Um, go ahead. No, I just was going to say you know I'm just struck by the beauty of the images. Your dad is such a great classic photographer. He has an incredible ability with figure groups. He has an incredible ability with figure with foreground and background and. It's just amazing. I mean, this is Dee Dee, who is in the famous Dee Dee and Carr image. I mean, she looks like she's, I mean, her, she has an incredible look, obviously, and she's almost like a sculpture at the same time. I mean, just this incredibly timeless in the way a sculpture is timeless. Yeah, and I, and I think the, the thing that's really beautiful about this image is just, you know, um, there, there are different aspects. And if you look at kind of the upper third and the layering of her, you know, her, her headdress mm -hmm. and the way it kind of overlaps, the texture that's there, then in the middle third, you you know, you see just the beauty of her, just the strikingness of her, her face, right? Yeah. Um, and then in the lower third, you're, you're seeing, you know, a bit of the, the jewelry and the, I mean, just the detail of the fabric. I, the, yeah. the thing that often impresses me in going through these images for sometimes you know 60 plus years old <clears throat> is the quality of the images uh, yeah. and the negatives and, and the way that they've um held up over time uh, and oftentimes you know we're taking these out of sleeves right that are sleeves that he put in and and probably at some time wanted to, to produce and and make and whether because you know he's too busy or because of what was happening in the world and covering all the political events and going, you know, traveling all over the world, yeah, they never saw, they never were able to be produced and, and put out into the world. And I, I, I love the fact that we get to, um, to feature and, and show um, these works. And you know, sometimes these women have never seen these images. Yeah, 
You want to talk about this one? I mean, we're having a good time. I doubt, yeah, we're, I doubt I mean, we're keeping off the grass. <laughs> yeah, I know. I agree. It, it's <laughs> certainly not keeping off the grass. Um, well, technically they are, because I think the grass is... Uh, the grass is yeah, there. I guess they are. They've, pro they've probably been on it so much. But I, <laughs> I think the pure... This is, you know... It's, it's incredible. incredible. It's just incredible. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's Black Boy Joy at its, at, its, at its core. You know, you have these kids who have these slingshots. They're together you see you know they're friends and and you know probably some a bit of family but just you know the way in which you would experience um you know playing in the summer and and i think that the ages seem to be to range uh quite a bit the kid second from the, the two kids on the left look like they're the younger guys are trying to yeah help the boys yeah um, then you got you know the kid over here who who seems like he's ready He's ready for anything. Um, he's collecting the rocks and, and setting up the next shot, right? But I just think it was one of these images where, you know, it it kind of touches on some of the the really amazing photographers that we've seen to capture kind of black life, like Gordon Parks and yeah. Jim Shabazz and Dawood Bay and you know Ming Smith and others. I just think it's it's one of these kind of classic. Um, images that just you know they're in their element they're in yeah. they're they're comfortable there and you know some of them are aware of the picture like the, the you know the you know, first from the left second and you know fourth um and fifth but the other guys are just like hey what are we doing you know we're, we're just out here having fun and i just it it spoke to me it really fit the 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 notion of like you know kids being in their own neighborhood and in their in in their comfort zone in their village right just enjoying yeah. themselves and just it was, um, yeah, this is, this is one of my favorites from this group. Yeah, well, we're both dads and we have boys. And I, this just, when you, if you, if, if you give yourself the time to just really look at each of the boys and just enjoy oh. it, it's, this is an endlessly wonderful, well, look, really, really wonderful image in terms of just belief in the human spirit, sincerely. No, and, and look, and it's funny too, when you, when you think back, like, this I one I love because that guy is he is ready. I think he's having a hot dog and he is he is he's going at it. He's going he's at going it. Going at it. But but I <laughs> I I think back to my childhood and you know it wasn't slingshots, but it was like <laughs> we used to play a game um in my neighborhood called Scalies, which is like <laughs> you have these tops and you like you you flick them around. So it just took it took me back. And then you know this one, this was pretty incredible. Um, yeah. You know, this is a uh, Mount Olivet Church, which is an, a known location. I mean, a, a still there today, an important yes. place. 119th and Malcolm X Boulevard, which, yeah. it, which you know, this is during one of the parades, and they're observing. But I just, you know, the <laughs> innocence and the joy of, you know, you have your elders out there kind of taking a look, hey, what's going on over here? But these kids are just enamored with the fact that they're seeing, you know, this you know, celebration of, you know, culture and black mm -hmm. pride and, and dignity. And I just, I, I love it because it's just, it's, it's one of these kind of, you know, he, he, he caught them at a moment where they were just being themselves. And I think that's part of it. And, and, you know, I still, I remember passing, I think the last time I was in New York, we went by, we, we drove right by this place and it's just, you know, it's part of the neighborhood. It's 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 part of you know that culture, and, and that building looks pretty good. Still, still, I think it's 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 you know beautifully art you know architecturally, and, um, beautifully constructed. I just it's it was just one of those things where I think it was like we we had to capture that and put this in it. Do you? I'm gonna just flip through here. Do you want to talk a little bit more about the Garvey Day Parade? Well, you know, Garvey Garvey is the 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 beginning of it all right mm -hmm. um the i the ideology of you know black is beautiful and self-empowerment and self-sufficiency you know the back to africa movement uh jamaican immigrant um thought leader um and they weren't around when garvey was around but carlos cooks who mm -hmm. then took the mantle um and really helped them with their ideology around how to think about themselves as Africans uh, in this uh, in America? Mm -hmm. um, they this was the you know August seventeenth parade that honored him annually, mm -hmm. 
And in this particular one, I, I believe the, the gentleman on the left, the very fit gentleman on the left is a Denny Zulu dancer. Yep. And then you have uh, from left to right, um, you have Brandassa models. So mm -hmm. um, it's really amazing. So you got Eunice, Eunice, you have Shirley, and then you have Juanita, who is uh, who recently uh, passed a few years ago. Mm -hmm. But I think, and then there's an observer. Well, actually, no, I think she's actually part of the group. I think she is. Um, yeah, I have I haven't placed her yet, but um, you know, it it says right there, and it's cut off a bit in the image, but it's Africa for the Africans, right? Which mm -hmm. is um, a Garvey, you know, a Garvey theory around, you know, anti, you know, against colonization, um, giving the land back to the people who owned it and, and, and supporting that. And, you know, these are images, these are um, ideas that Asia as the Grandassa models, my father, um, were putting back into the community um, to help awareness, to help you know, as I always talk about, you know, Black is Beautiful wasn't just a rallying cry. Um, it was a call to action and it was, yeah. you know, a, a political ideology <clears throat> that was centered in, excuse me, um, focusing in on helping African nations gain their liberation. And so I think when you think about this annual tr tradition, uh, and how important it was to the community. It was it was there to also help bring forth ideas and bring forth information <clears throat> to ensure that people understood what was happening. So just to point out a couple things, obviously August 17th is that when the parade will happen this year for anyone who might like to see it in New York. <clears throat> that is the date. <clears throat> that is the date. So, and then in addition to that, I'd like to point out, of course, that the show at the New York Historical Society, the press preview is the 18th. It opens to the public on the 19th of August. So there's a few different kind of fun coming together there. Obviously, Gar uh, Garvey, for those that um, don't know, but just to kind of add in a little bit, was exiled from the United States when 1930, early 30s. Um, J. Edgar Hoover, the FBI, who obviously, um, you know, have been very um, impactful on political dissent um, throughout that period, were a big part of that. And then coming from the Garveyite movement, you have not only Black is Beautiful and some articulation that your father then goes on to really articulate through the images and the grand asses and, and Ajaz really works to be the first to, to sort of promote from this idea, but also by Black, thinking Black, a lot of different ideas trace back to Garvey and Carlos Cooks, who was a member of the founder, founder or member of the, or leader of the African National Pioneer Movement would be one of many people who would be speaking on the street on 125th Street in Harlem, educating people, talking about politics, telling them things that they might not have ever learned before and might be learning about their, their past, regardless of what African people they're, they're descended from. Um, this is 125th Street, which is also, of course, famous in Harlem and a real artery of um, pride and activity and the kind of heartbeat of the community. Do you want to talk a little bit about this image? Because your dad does an amazing job. Also, you mentioned the Denizulu dancers, which I would just note is are very significant. They brought articulated um, sense of the dancing of different African peoples and introduce those to Americans. Um, but this is a dense one. Again, you're, I love how your dad uses texts and this is a fantastic image. Do you wanna talk just a little bit about our bicyclist here? Yeah, look, I think, you know, image worth, is worth a thousand words, right? Yeah. It, but he does a really beautiful job of capturing um, the words that are important in this image, right? And so you have, you know, top, you obviously you have this, this this gentleman on the bicycle who is in and of himself just seems to be a great character. He is uh, your dad. We, there are three kind of images where your dad is, there's the sleeping uh, shoe shine man. That, right. There's a, a man with a push cart there. And your dad seems they're like these, I mean, it's too much coming from the art world to say that they're like performance art, but I, they are like moving sculptures. They're on all these objects that they have. So and I don't, go ahead, you. No, I mean, I mean it, it touches upon the, the street photography um, era that he grew up in, right? Yeah. And I think, you know, there are masters in that, in that 
Aaron, I think he, you know, I, I think we know him for, you know, he's known for his work in music and fashion, and he's now becoming, now he's known for his work in art. I think the other thing that, you know, we'll touch upon in a bit is, you know, his, his work as a street photographer, Yeah, you know, capturing what was happening um, in and around him. Uh, but you know he this this guy's got this you know amazing hat on with the flowers. Um, he's on this bicycle, mm. on and incredibly and and I have to just emphasize this. And there's it a flag is, on the handlebars, I think. Yeah, there there's a flag, is American flag on the handlebars, and then in the back wheel spoke, there is an image <clears throat> of John and Jackie Kennedy, mm. and you know. I just, it was just striking to me when you really got down into it. It's like, okay, look, look at all what's going on here. He is, he's in his, in his Harlem neighborhood on his bike, you know, and there he's, he's saying a couple of things and, and, you know, there's some perspective here. And then juxtaposed to that, there is in the top right-hand corner, the Harlem office of the national NAACP, um, which is right there above the Admiral lounge, which is, you know, a place of, um, you know, Lounging. Enjoying, lounging and enjoying yourself. <laughs> um, and then right in the back is a photo studio, which I and think church. Is, just imagine in a church, right? It's like, it's, it's the quintessential kind of Harlem kind of juxtaposition of all the different things that make up what a neighborhood is, and specifically yeah. Harlem. Yeah. Um, and, you know, he captures, and then you have, you know, maybe the somebody who works at the Admiral or somebody about to leave the Admiral, you know, right outside this gentleman, this woman who's walking by. And then, you know, something that was really <laughs> jumped out to me as a New Yorker um, is how pristine the street was. And <laughs> yeah, nothing, I, I promise you, we did nothing absolutely. This street. <laughs> I was like, this is amazing. It was almost too pristine. It almost yeah. like it was set up, but it, when you look, even if you look at the Misho's books one, yeah, that too is just this pristine street yeah. because this was a neighborhood. Yeah, um, still is a neighborhood that people care about. It meant it means something, and it, and it has cultural significance, and it means something to the people, both who live there and people outside of the neighborhood. You know, I, you know, Harlem, Harlem is a is is the mecca, right? And so it, it's it's one of those things where you just capture kind of all the elements that are in this picture, just really just jumped at us, and it, and again it tied back to the Misho's books picture um, that we have with the ladder from the, you know, from the street speaker from Carlos Peaker um, that was there. And this man, just this Shushan guy, just sit, sleeping next to the ladder. So I just, it tied back to a number of different things. And we wanted to, we wanted to bring that one forward. But it, again, it's, it's about my village. It, it well, I think, you know, you made some interesting points there with regard to documentary photography and your dad's knowledge and, and you know, ability there. Because, of course, we've looked so much at, um, you know, here in the early 60s, you know, he's encountering this mass media and how to put Black is Beautiful in there and how to create images that people can see. And he works so hard trying to, even writing to companies with him and telling them, well, how about you have a, an African-American model here with your 7-Up? Um, so really engaging in a lot of different image conversations for what the image can do. We're getting towards, you know, the time when we usually... Clo close. Um, I don't, I can flip, flip through a few more images. I don't know if there's anybody in the chat that you might want to look at, or if there are things that we haven't talked about here as we kind of, um, in the final few, few minutes. No, I just, I, you know, I think, I think this is one that, um, you know, Clara Boggs, this is a, an amazing picture. I think you referenced it in, in your post recently. I did. You know, this appeared, uh, you know, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm drawing a blank all of a sudden. It was in the, liber in the Liberator. The Liberator, that's right, it was in the Liberator, 63. Yep. And uh, I thought that was amazing that there, that on that uh, poster that you provided me for, for the naturally shows around 1970, I had not ever seen that. And you pointed out that Eldridge Cleaver is writing from prison about how important the Grand Assa models were to him and obviously Black Panther leader and such. But I mean, amazing that this impact was really, yeah, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, no, it's, it's you know, it's again, um, back to the studio kind of element of his work, uh, early work. Uh, oh, and then, you know, this one, this, 
this is another one of the uh, you know kids playing in the neighborhood right there's probably a demolished building and they're they're just enjoying it right you got the kids just jumping around playing on the rocks it's it it's a you know it speaks to how things in your neighborhood can become you know spaces for joy yeah um, and then you know what kid doesn't love swings? What the Delta doesn't love swings? Like this is this, this is, is an amazing uh, stacked visual image. It's I mean just the, the really great. and think about the timing that it took to to get it so that you had the stack this way. <laughs> yes, right. This is medium format. This is this is not a digital image. So he had to capture that on film and then find the right spot. But you know this is movement. This is you know I, I love how sharp they are i love the joy um that you just get i mean this is one of those images just to make you smile similar to the boys playing in the uh in the slingshot so yeah well um i think if people take the time there's a really nice statement by kwame here uh in the press release that talks a little bit about um the the village of the neighborhood for children and the safety and security of growing up in your in your neighborhood as a place to express yourself and find find a place and providing that for people that's very moving did you have anything else that you wanted to say or uh no i think um it's uh thanks again for the opportunity looking forward you. to um you know catch well, up we're really delighted that you could join us today. Um, if you have any questions about the images, just send me an email. Um, I get all the requests, so they are available. And if you have questions or if there's anything you want to talk about, you know, just feel free to be in touch anytime. Uh, the show is Kwame Brathwaite, My Village, New York, and there's a, it's on our website and we'll be posting it on social media. Obviously, there's the book, Kwame Brathwaite Black is Beautiful. It's now in its fifth printing, congratulations. Um, from Aperture. The next stop of the Aperture tour was is the New York Historical Society coming up. And we'll be presenting Kwame's work um, at our Basel Miami Beach. There's a major presentation happening with in conjunction with Suzanne Vielmutter here in LA. It'll be really interesting with some artists kind of working with the uh, material. And there's just a lot of stuff going on. The article in National, in National Geographic that Kwame uh, referenced there has some great images and there's lots of resources for anything that, that you might need. So thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thanks so for doing much. this with me, Kwame. Talk to you later. Thank you. All right, have, have a good, good weekend. Okay, yeah. bye.